Well, all right. All right, all right, all right, as Matthew McConaughey, I think that's how you pronounce it, would say, hail and welcome back, everyone, to uh, Random Heathen Ramblings, a Midgard Musings podcast. I am your host, Jesse, and it has been a long time. I say a long time, a relatively long time since we've done a podcast here. Um, it's been over a month. I've got a lot of things to to kind of go over. I got a subject I want to talk about today, but um, man, the podcast. I am sorry. Uh, just first off and foremost, just want to say sorry for the uh, lack of of uh, the podcast um, being distributed out here. Lots been going on, um, which I'm going to get to a bit in this episode, and hopefully clear up any you know concerns or questions you may have um, about things. So, you know, before we get into it, let's go ahead and uh, rock our intro and get into things. So, um, yeah, here we go. All right. Well, as I said before, um, thank you to everyone. First and foremost, like I want to say, just say thank you um, to everyone that's uh, listening and watching for um, some housekeeping things right off the bat. You know, um, podcast listeners out here, um, check the show notes for the um, ways that you can you know, support this podcast. And for the YouTube channel members that get the podcast um, version in your in you know in your YouTube feed, you know, so you get the not just the audio, but you get to kind of see me on screen right now. Um, thank you so much. First and foremost, I'm saying this first and foremost a lot. It is first and it is foremost. But thank you so much for your uh, your ongoing support and and, and keeping um, your support going you know, throughout all this. I know it's been over a month since we did a podcast here. Um, and uh, the last one that I did, I think, was uh, middle, of, middle of July. And a lot has happened since then um, in my life and in the lives of people who I'm very closely um, associated with, mainly my wife um, and some other things. Um, but suffice it to say, it's been a very eventful month, um, a lot in, in a lot of ways that you may not um, always, you know, want to celebrate or, or want to think about. There's been deaths in the family or a death in the family. There's been um, just a lot of turmoil and upheaval um, within the, you know, hearth structure, the, the, uh, the home life, the, the family uh, clans, I guess you could say, which is not an uncommon thing. Um, I, I'm not immune to it, and neither are a lot of folks listening and watching. Um, a lot of things just, you know, monkey wrenches get thrown into the, into the mix of things. But um, please check out the show notes uh, for you folks out there listening uh, for ways you can support this podcast. And um, if you want to be a part of getting these podcasts uh, visually through YouTube, um, that will all be included in the show notes as well. A big shout out and thank you to the channel members that um, do support the channel in this way. It is greatly appreciated and I'm sorry for the, for the lack of content. Um, so let me just kind of get into like the whys of things. Um, and, and give you some transparency uh, because you guys have done a, a tremendous um, thing to, you know, voluntarily offer your support um, through monetary means. And I think it, it's only fair uh, for me to be transparent to a certain degree and let you guys know kind of what's been going on. So since the last, you know, random heathen ramblings podcast has been out um, <clears throat> basically the, uh, the last podcast was aired on July 16th. 
Okay. And on July 19th, um, my wife and I were sitting at home and, um, and if you guys follow me on social media, you probably already know about this, but for those who don't, okay. Um, on July 19th, um, I should really just double check and make sure that I got the date right. Yeah, it was July 19th. Um, we were sitting at home. My wife and I were sitting at home and she received a call. Um, and it was a call that nobody ever wants to receive, you know. Um, we got word that her young brother, her baby brother, um, had, uh, had died. And it was a very tragic um, it, it was, it was, it was very tragic the way that, that it happened. I don't want to go into explicit details out of respect, um, for my hearth and for her. Um, but suffice it to say, it was a very tragic event that took place. Um, so we got the call, um, around that time or, or, or right at that time, my wife and I had been, um, planning to take a, uh, vacation take a vacation, a week and a half or two vacation. Um, and we had, at the end of June, beginning of July, we had planned to go and see my family, which are in New York. My sister had just given birth to her first daughter, the very first child that she's you know, ever, um, ever had. Uh, and my first niece by blood, you know what I mean? Like my first, like I've had, you know, cousins and stuff that have had kids and whatnot but like my sister has a a daughter now um and she gave birth to her daughter um back in june and uh beginning of june so we had plans of after her birth we were gonna you know give it about a month for them to get settled in and and, and whatnot and, and come up there so we had plans of right around the end of july to come up so we had you know scheduled everything with my job and, and with my wife's, you know, business and her work and everything, we had coordinated everything for us to go up to New York and see uh, my family and, and meet my niece and, and all that kind of stuff, right? And it didn't work out. So we had, um, and that's a whole other story. Um, but so basically, what it, what it, what we had um, done in 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 uh, you know, we we switched gears a bit. We decided we were going to head out to Texas and meet some of Eric Shervin's uh, folks, meet him and his wife and, and some people. And he had a, a park moot scheduled for the weekend of that, that, that weekend, right? So um, on the 19th is when we got the bad news. That, that weekend was when we were planning to go out to Texas and, and meet Eric and his people and probably do some, you know, channel content or whatever. Um, for those that are listening and watching, there'll be some, you know, information about Eric, uh, Sherv and the Ravens call for those, um, that, that may know him by his online, uh, you know, moniker. <clears throat> so Eric word, Weaver have the Ravens call him and I've been talking for a couple of years. Uh, we were going to be going out there to East Texas, um, become some, you know, uh, establish some, some personal friendships anyway. Because of the news that my wife received um, about her brother, that whole thing was called off, right? So the vacation time that I had planned and scheduled and, and that she had, you know, the, the, the two of us had planned and scheduled uh, for going to Texas and everything like that, that had been wiped off of the, you know, not an option anymore. Just had other things to, to focus on. So we, um, we tended to the family business, you know, um, following a family member's death, you know, funeral arrangements, visitation, all this kind of stuff, and then tending to family things. Like, when I say it was a, a tremendously stressful and, 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 and whatnot week, I had almost two weeks scheduled off of work. Um, and when I say that I didn't have any downtime, during that vacation, uh, that that's an accurate statement. We had um, the week after it happened, we we 
um, secured ourselves a cabin in East Tennessee. We went out there. There's some content on the YouTube channel. I had talked about it. We were up there. It was nice. It was a nice three day getaway. But for the week and a half, almost two weeks of time that I had down to just get away from work and try to, you know, disconnect and, 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 uh, you know, it didn't happen because of, of this unfortunate event. So, um, that puts us at about, you know, end of July, beginning into August. And, um, which is just, you know, we're now in the third week of August. So at the beginning of August, we know I, I get back and, and get into like the swing of things with, with work and whatnot. There's been, there, there, there's a whole lot of things with my job that I had to, to tend to. And, um, it's, it's, it's just been for such a short period of time, you know, the last month, month and a half, almost, um, it's just been a whirlwind of events to take place between, like I said, death of a family member, um, having to help facilitate and coordinate all those sorts of things. Um, and, and trying to get stuff out here on, on the various platforms that I do, there was just a lot for me to try to, to juggle. So content on the YouTube channel has been, you know, sparse here and there, try to do some live streams. We got a really good, um, couple of live streams over here the last couple of weeks, um, helping my in-laws raise some funds for moving into their new place. If you guys want to check out um, the Midgard Musings YouTube channel and see what I'm talking about, all that stuff's out there. Um, but <laughs> suffice it to say, it has been a very, just uh, like I said, you know, crazy series of events. And now that we're getting in towards, you know, the close to the end of August and feels like it feels like that 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 train is 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 coasting back to a a steady state you know what i mean um it's not quite so what's the right word uh chaotic <laughs> chaotic is a good word and so life goes on things happen um and we're here um but so just kind of like as an update of, of the podcast, I do want to reintroduce the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast on a more regular basis, not only to, um, you know, meet the obligations that I have to my um, YouTube channel members and supporters who are literally, you know, you guys are, are paying to, to get that extra content and get that extra perk, uh, for which I'm, again, very grateful. Um, not just want to do that. Um, but also want to get some folks on here to to talk about some some cool heathen related things. So this episode is a kind of state of the podcast, state of the ch channel, state of the union address, state, state of the podcast address, we call it. Um, do have a thing that I want to talk about, though, um, while we're here on this podcast. But going forward, I do definitely want to um, have a more uh, regular cadence. So every week, you guys get new content, new, new podcasts come out, new videos on, on the channel for the YouTube channel members. Um, and, and that way you are getting what you deserve. So more guests hopefully will be coming on, um, more to come on that. Um, but regardless, the, the goal here from me, um, and you're hearing it from me first, uh, is to, like I said, get uh, podcasts out here on a more regular cadence once a week. Um, in addition to my YouTube channel stuff. So the next one that's probably going to be coming out here, the next video that's going to be coming out is a video that I want to do on earth worship, um, which kind of ties into what I want to talk about a bit today um, in a sort of way, not directly, but sort of in, in, in a sort of, you know, uh, indirect sort of way so earth worship and and some of the the figures and whether it be the mythology or whether it be in um historical sources that points to how or if you know um in in, in pre-christian times and pre-christian heathen times and um germanic heathenry um how uh earth worship earth veneration um nature that 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 whole sort of thing was done i was asked by one of my longtime listeners and supporters so big shout out to crow um from the uh was the deathlanders uh out there in idaho 
So shout out to you, Crow, if you're listening. Um, the next video that I plan to do will be rendered in audio format as well here for the podcast. So for those that are listening and don't want to get on YouTube and, and, and be a part of that whole thing, I, it will be out here um, in, in, in audio format. It's going to be a little bit different than what you're experiencing right now because those, those videos um, are pre-recorded, you know, and, and, and done to whatever, the, whatever I do with them in, in post-edit. But uh, that will be a thing. Um, so there'll be that. And then hopefully going forward every week, we have new content coming out here on the podcast with some folks to engage and, and talk about various heathen related things and just have a good time. You know, um, one of the fun things that we've been doing here over the last couple of weeks uh, to kind of just break back into the um, normal cadence of is, is have YouTube live streams. We've gotten some guests to participate over there on that. Um, one of which is a very bright, very intelligent young man. Um, his name is Wyatt Coverdale. Been a longtime supporter of the channel over the last couple of years. Youngest, one of the youngest that I know of um, uh, individuals who engages with my content. And if you were to listen and watch about what Wyatt talks about, <laughs> um, you'd be amazed to know how young he actually is. So um, he is on YouTube. He has a YouTube channel uh, under his under his name. Um, that it will be annotated in the show notes, down in the description, et cetera. However you're listening, watching, check it out. Uh, check out Wyatt's stuff. He's he's a very bright young individual, and I would love to see his channel. He's he's approaching 80 subscribers um, on YouTube. Um, so even if you're not a regular YouTuber, you know, like if you're not regularly on YouTube or whatever, um, please check him out. Um, and if you can subscribe to his channel, because I want to, I would love to see uh, by the time this podcast gets out, I would love to see him get another 20 some, some, some odd subscribers and get him past that, you know, um, 100 subscriber milestone. Very bright young man, very intelligent, um, wiser beyond, he is wise beyond his years. Um, and he reminds me a lot of myself in a way and, and uh, others who've come to know him. Um, he reminds you know, they, he, they are reminded of themselves when they see him. So um, huge shout out to Wyatt Coverdale. Um, he is only on YouTube. Again, um, not probably going to hear uh, or see these, uh, this content right now when it comes out, but please check him out. Um, his details, like I said, YouTube channel and stuff is going to be in the description in the show notes of this podcast. So taking a hit off the old vape. Um, I think that pretty much covers most of everything that I wanted to talk about as far as kind of just to bring you all up to speed on where things have been at um, and, and why content has been so, you know, sparse here um, on the podcast. I do enjoy these things. I really do it. It's nice to just get on here and, and sometimes just talk, vent, whatever. Um, but it's also great to get you know, participants and, and people that want to talk about things and have some dialogue. You know, I think it's been a really fun experience um, having people come on here and, and share their ideas and share their thoughts. So more to come on that hopefully soon. Um, but uh, the, the, the main subject <clears throat> or, the, or the topic, I guess, for this particular podcast, at least, right, was to talk about uh, the Vatir, the whites, um, not the whites as in like W H I T E S, but the white, the whites as in W I G H T S, the whites, um, the Vatir, the uh, the spirits that um, exist around us in the profane. I posted on. Um, my various social media platforms. So if you guys follow me on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram, uh, you would have seen a post from, uh, from myself with uh, some fruit that I offered um, or that I gifted, that I, that I placed out outside um, on my property in this kind of um, makeshift hogar, um, sort of like a, a, an outdoor altar for the, for the land vitier, for the, the whites of the land specifically um, had some watermelon to put out there. And, and the caption was, you know, it's very hot 
oppressively so, right? For anybody that's out here listening in the United States, um, I think almost anywhere in any region of the United States, um, but especially in the South, you know, I think today um, our heat index reached triple digits. Uh, it was like 105, 103, 105, something like that it was a high heat index um, here for the area. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's oppressively hot. And uh, my post was, you know, because of that, like it's, it's a good time to be reminded of um, making sure that we uh, engage the Vatir of the land around us. And I wanted to read a couple of things about what the whites are, what the Vatir are. Um, so I'm going to be linking a, uh, an article in the show notes, down description, et cetera, uh, for where you can read this, but just as kind of like an, uh, just to kind of capsulate, um, encapsulate, capture, whatever, um, what I'm talking about, what we're talking about are the whites. Um, so the whites are, like I said, um, they are, they are spiritual beings. Um, they exist in the profane, but they have a stronger connection between the, 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 the separation between the, the sacred and the profane. And there is a separation between them. When we talk about as heathens, um, the difference or the separation between the sacred realms and the profane, the sacred and, uh, and, and uh, I'm at a loss for words. It, it encompasses the realm of the gods. The gods are sacred. The gods um, themselves are sacred beings and they exist in sacred space and time. Now us and um, uh, beings such as the whites um, exist in profane space. Now, the whites are not the same as we are in, in, in our physical sense that we are, you know, mortals in, in this. They are, um, they are spiritual. They exist in the spirit form within the profane space. But because they are spirit form, they, they have a, um, an easier way to connect between the profane realms and the sacred realms. So... When we talk about the whites, we're talking about the, the spirits that exist in the land um, and the, the properties and, and sometimes the homes um, around us. Um, so in modern times, we use whites uh, to refer to spirits that live among us and whether they be in, you know, um, the trees, nature, you know, bodies of water, um, anything within our home quite often and within our hearths, you know, right? The enclosures, um, our, our, our roof trees, as it were, um, in, inside our inhabitable spaces, so your apartment, your home, et cetera. Um, so you may hear the term land vitir, hus vitir, land whites, house whites. Kolf god is another term that used to describe these beings. Um, amongst varying um, or very specific uh, pagan circles, uh, specifically like the uh, those who are Anglo-Saxon um, heathens, they will use the term Kofgod to uh, describe the uh, the localized god or the localized spirit that dwells among the pro like dwells within the profane space among. The, the physical living human beings, you know? So Vetir is, is a word that's Old Norse uh, in, in, in uh, origin, um, but whites is, is Anglo-Saxon and they mean basically the same thing. So some folks nowadays, some heathens nowadays um, will become acutely aware of the presence of our whites and the, or and or the Vatir, whatever you want to call. It. We'll, we'll just use the terms interchangeably for the sake of uh, the sake of this podcast, you know. And others may not be so much connected or, or so much in tune to their presence. Uh, suffice that to say, they are around us. So, um, how much the the whites um, make their presence known is going to, I think, largely be due to how much they are engaged and how much they are um, kept in the loop on things, you know what I mean? So um, one other, one other uh, descriptive thing to, to, to think about when it comes to the whites are they're not just like tied to nature elements, but they could 
be, um, and are in many cases, you know, spirit beings that are um, connected to people who have died, either in or on the land uh, or the home. Um, they may be tied to a family, they may be tied to the property, they are somehow connected um, in profane space, but exist in the spirit realm. It's a bit complex. And I understand, like, for those maybe just first tuning in, listening, whatever, like, that, that could be, like, well, what do you mean, you know, profane space, spirit realm? Um, it's kind of like, I don't know, I think of it as almost like, you know, you're in a building and you've got a bunch of room and you got different rooms within a building, you know, how you can go, you're still in the building, but you're, you go into different rooms. It's like, that's the spirit realm. You're in the building still, but you're hitting a different area of the building. You know what I mean? Like you're, I don't know, that, that's maybe very rudimentary, rudimentary um, in, in description, but it's, it's kind of the way I think of it or, or look of it as you're, you're still in the same overall realm like you're in the building but you're just in a different part of the building so the presence of our whites the presence of the whites um among us can be felt stronger or less quite often based on how we um engage with them how we um communicate with them and how we coexist so one of the most popular ways for us um in modern times to uh maintain that uh, connection is through gifting. Uh, the gifting cycle is is something that's talked about within heathenry as, as, as a very important uh, aspect of our spiritual um, beliefs, because within the gifting cycle, um, there is, you know, the, it's cyclic, right? So reciprocation is a thing and or cyclic, cyclic, whatever. It's reciprocation. We, we gift um, in the anticipation and the hope that we receive gifts uh, in return. It's not the same as a sacrifice. It's not the same as bloat. It has some similarities, but it's not quite the same. Uh, but the gifting cycle, the, the, the reasons why we do what we do with like the Vatir, um and the whites, um, it's, it's important uh, for those of us who are uh, uh, acutely connected to these because um, we want to maintain a good relationship with the, 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 the beings that were here before us, right? We as mortal beings that came and took up habitation um, in a place that was theirs before we got here. It's kind of like, you don't want to be rude and just barge and be like, it's my place now. Um, it's like, hey, I'm here, um, want to live amicably together and we want to share and coexist peacefully. And so the gifting exchange, the gifting cycle is a way for us to externalize that gesture and let the whites know that we are here in peace, that we have claimed this land, or we have claimed this parcel of land, that we have claimed this area as our own because we have to live here in our you know, mortal bodies. We have to coexist, like we have to be here, we're, we're, we're here, um, but we're not invading and we're not being malicious in any way. You know, some whites are malicious and some whites need to be driven out because they have, you know, certain things um, connected to them that make them as such. And, and, and that's a whole different sort of approach to things. But overall and generally, um, the approach is to um, claims, you know, uh, stake claim to your parcel of land, whether it be your apartment or your property or your home, whatever the case may be. and um, claim it as, as yours um, in a way that makes it very clear that we are here in peace and that we are not here to um, disrupt anything. We are here to coexist peacefully. And um, I guess the reason why I, I bring it up or the reason why I like to talk about it a bit is because in modern heathenry, I don't see a lot of that. I don't see a lot of focus on that, at least not in in the various platforms that I'm in and, and such. I see more of it coming around, uh, which is great. Um, but so much of what I've seen and so much of what I've um, been, you know, that I've had visibility to is, is always focused on the gods. You know what I mean? The gods and the goddesses. And that's great. That's fine. Um, but there's an order of things. There, 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 I, I feel that there should be a um, focus on what you focus on, when you focus on it, and how you focus on them. So, for instance, right, um, 
when it comes to and again this is not a this is not a slight to how anyone that's listening watching etc wants to practice their heathenry because your heathenry how you heathen is is on you and yours so it's your hall your call not my hall not my call once again shout out eric shervin raven's call he's the one who coins that phrase that i use repeatedly and constantly so not my hall not my call is not intellectual property of midgard musings that is 100 eric word weaver shervin at the raven's call but it's a great um catchphrase it's a great you know hashtag if you will it's a great thing to keep in mind it's not my hall not my call you do what you do the way you want to do it and if it works for you then great um but some things that i've come to learn to keep in mind is that the focus on the gods the focus on the sacred has to be executed in a very specific way to achieve what you want to achieve in its you know and get and get the most out of it so engaging with the gods on an individual level on an individual basis um have i had experiences where i feel like the gods were present where i feel like the gods took notice where i felt like the gods were there yes absolutely but that is my upg right that is my unverified personal gnosis and and you may have your unverified personal gnosis your unverified uh your upg that is is your experience it's not to be confused and it's not to be um positioned as being anything other than that right so i guess let me just kind of um re you know rewind a bit when i say connection to the gods connecting with the gods on an individual level historically is very rarely ever described because um and we only see it really in very rare cases such as in sagas you know, when it comes to great heroes, kings, et cetera, things like that. Individual connection to the gods, individual connection to the sacred is, is very rarely ever documented. What is documented and what we do know historically is that how the sacred was engaged, how the sacred were engaged, how the gods were engaged through bloat, through those sorts of ritual was done at a community level, at, at the tribal level. There were, there, everybody was there. It was done at specific times for specific reasons and in specific ways. And that is how the gods were engaged. Now that is reconstructionist. Uh, that is a reconstructionist approach of which I'm, <laughs> I say that I'm not one, I'm, I'm not a hardcore reconstructionist, although the more and more I, I talk to myself and hear myself talk, I'm like, well, you kind of gravitate more towards that than anything. Maybe I am starting to get more reconstructionist in my ideas. I don't discount modern approaches to things. What I, um, and I don't discount UPG. I just don't like to see the two, um, confused or, or or made to be something other than what they're not right so modern day variances your upg all that keep it where it is and it is what it is but if you're looking at things from strictly a historical approach from a reconstructionist approach right the gods and, and, and how the sacred were engaged was done at the community or tribal levels so with that being said the focus in modern times the focus that people have when they first get into heathenry that they have of the gods right their focus being on the gods i feel is a bit um misconstrued and i don't like to say like oh you're doing it wrong or you're being a bad heathen or whatever but it's like are you remembering the fact that you need to establish first of all your own hearth cult your own you know ways that you your your, your family traditions your hearth traditions are you making sure that you have a good connection and a good strong tie to uh, your ancestors and to the whites, right? The, the Vatir around you, because those are the things that your ancestors, the whites, the ancestors kind of can, can encompass or uh, be a part of the whites as well. Because again, the localized spirits, the localized land uh, spirits uh, can include family members can include ancestors so they are here they are present they are they exist as spirits within the profane space so they're kind of like in that next room under the same building roof that you're in you're they're just in a different room than you are and you haven't unlocked that door to get into that room to to quite connect with them yet have you done what you needed to do to get to that room and have you let them in have they let you in that sort of thing that's where it starts that's why i believe where heathenry starts is that being connected closely to the localized 
Vatir, the localized spirits, because once again, they coexist with us. They, they were here before we were, and we're in their space. So are we connecting with them first? The, the connection to the gods and the connection to the sacred happens better um, authentically, rather, uh, through you know, tribal structures and, 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 and tribal methods um, on, on, on a larger scale. But what I would love to see more of, what I would love to hear more of is, is people connecting with their localized whites, the local land vatir, the vatir of the home, the vatir of the land, the vatir of their, you know, the cove god, whatever name you want to put to it. Um, so that was kind of the, the, the focus or the, or the inspiration behind the post yesterday uh, or whenever this podcast comes out the day before, whenever it was, is that, you know, Yes, the gods are important and they, and they are sacred and they should be um, venerated in, in, in the way that they should be. But don't neglect the fundamentals of the, the version of, of paganism that you've adopted. The, the Germanic heathenry was very um, focused on ancestor veneration and regional localized spirit veneration. Hugely focused on that. And learn more about that and become more familiar with it, right? Um, so that's going to kind of just be what today's podcast is. It's, 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 it's an update. It's a state of the channel, state of the podcast address. I don't like to be all official with the terminologies. Um, but I thought that it would be a great way to include um, this discussion or this thought. So check the show notes. Check the description for more about this. Vatir discussion, the whites, etc. It's a really good discussion. It comes from somebody who I um, uh, believe is a very trusted um, individual, trusted source, um, does really great things. So check out that information in the link. Again, show notes, description below, up above, wherever it is on whatever platform you're listening to. Um, and consider going forward ways that you want to support uh, this podcast, whether it be through listener support, whether it be through becoming a member on the YouTube channel and getting the visual versions of the podcast, you know, the video versions where you kind of see me on screen and see all the, the goofy shenanigans that can sometimes happen um, that you can't necessarily capture from just the audio versions. Um, whatever it is that you want to do, um, there's going to be a link tree that's in the show notes as well. It, it, it tells you all the social media platforms that are on if you want to donate uh, to the channel in any way or to the podcast. There's PayPal, there's you know, Patreon, there's a, there's a small handful of ways that you can monetarily support what I do here to keep new content coming. Um, it's not a cash grab. It's not me trying to beg. It is there. If you want to, I'm going to still do what I do. And, and thankfully, um, here now, recently, things have kind of, like I said before, the train is kind of, you know, coasting to a, a more comfortable, manageable um, rate. So more to come soon. Should have a new podcast out next week. Um, at the very least, it'll be the, the Earth Worship um, video that's going to be out on YouTube and then here also on the podcast uh, for those listening. So stay tuned for that. Um, really appreciate everybody. You know, like I said, really appreciate everybody just um, being here to listen and be a part of my random heathen rambling. So thank you all so much. For listening today and watching. I hope you all enjoyed today's episode. Um, upvote it, favorite it, um, give it a like. Uh, please re feel free to reach out in any sort of way that you can. If you guys are listening to the podcast and you want to be featured, um, you can always call in to the Midgard Musings hotline. That number is a uh, domestic U.S. number, but it's a Google Voice number. So 615-671-9832. Just give me a call, leave a voicemail. would love to feature you here on the podcast with your questions, comments, or thoughts um, in a future episode. So that's always open. Call anytime. Uh, and until we talk again, and until there's a new episode, hail to you all. Thank you for your support. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll talk again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>